when I first started writing the books, this was in, um, I was 17 years old. I was um, living in, um, really in like the armpit of France, like the, a, a part of France that is in no way um, French or interesting or, <laughs> I mean, it really is like a terrible, terrible little bit of nowhere France. Um, like they didn't even have an hypermarché, they had a supermarché, which was like, you know, something that had been, uh, like was decades old in terms of uh, um, French commerce. Um, anyway, I started reading uh, there and I had the blank book and I just wrote down um, the, the author and the title and I underlined it um, and, I, uh, and I listed them and I didn't even um, write numbers. I didn't keep track. And it was funny, it wasn't until I was criticized um, by a boyfriend much later um, that I was just writing these things down in order to like, like uh, you know, um, tick things off my list um, and to show off about how much I'd read. Um, and I, that then I started putting the numbers in. I went back and I was like, oh, I, I never thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. um, but I, will, uh, I perversely took the criticism um, in, a, I guess, in a constructive way and I, uh, or destructive way, because mm -hmm. the, the thing about when you do put numbers is that you can then make all kinds of mathematical calculations. And back to your point about, you know, the, the amount of reading you get done when you have like kids and, and jobs and that kind of thing, uh, you can see that your annual average um, declines. Uh, so I remember, when I was unemployed or very marginally employed, living in um, northern Thailand after college, and uh, I basically had no friends, and uh, there was no internet, and I didn't have a telephone. Um, I read 76 books that year, which for me was a lot, but it also included things like Anna Karenina and Moby Dick, like they weren't, you know, little short, easy books. Um, and then I think after my third child was born and I was like working pretty full time, um, it was 34. And so, um, so the, the, the numbering is, is uh, kind of a mixed, a mixed blessing, it's a mixed bag. Um, and then I have other annotations. I started off writing ink in parentheses when I didn't finish something. I think the first book that I didn't finish in the book of books was Interview with a Vampire, which um, I really, I wanted to like that book. I really, really didn't like it. Um, I found it in the bathroom of one of my stepbrothers. It was his bathroom and he had like a bunch of cheap paperbacks in there and I picked it up, but I, I didn't finish that. That eventually evolved and now it's a little empty square. Um, to signify when I don't finish reading something. Um, I try to finish everything, but. Do you have uh, to get, is there, is there a certain threshold? Like if you start reading, start reading something and read like 75 pages or something. It gets a square. It gets a square. It counts still. It gets in there, it just like, gets the square. Like 30 pages? The dread square. No, 30 pages doesn't go in. Yeah. Um, I, you know, and sometimes I pick up a book and you know, I was talking about books being very mood based. Um, I recently, um, actually, I did this for the first time. I asked two of my kids, my older kids, um, what book I should read next because I had just finished reading a number of contemporary novels and I felt like I needed, I, I, and they were humorous and light and I, I needed something where I felt like I, there were, the stakes were higher um, and I wanted to have some kind of like real emotional engagement in what I was reading. And the two books, um, well, I picked out three books. Um, one was Scoop by Evelyn Waugh, which I'd never read and always meant to read, and I picked up recently at Powell's Bookstore in Portland, Oregon, and uh, that was not deeply engaging, so ultimately that didn't make the cut. And the other two books I picked up were Constellation of Vital Phenomena by um, Anthony Mara and, um, and Emile Zola, um, Belly of Paris. And I read the um, back of the covers and showed them to my kids and asked them to vote. And they, of course, like being contrary, one picked the Zola and the other picked the Mara. And I read the Zola. And so then I thought, okay, I've got to be fair to the other child. And I picked up the, the Mara, but it, I wasn't going on my own like need at that mm -hmm. moment. And so when I did, when I started to read it, I realized like it wasn't what I needed at the moment. I really like it. Yeah. Um, and I will go back to it. I mm -hmm. read like 15 pages and I thought like, this is really good, but it's yeah. just not, it's like not filling that 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 gut level need um, and I put it down and I realized there was a reason that I had picked up scoop which was I I, I wanted um, to engage with something also a little bit relevant something that was like a bit of an escape but also relevant and I ended up reading um, Ben Bradley's 1995 memoir a good life newspaper bearing and other adventure so obviously relevant to me working at the New York Times um, but also working there like a, you know a million years ago in technology time um, mm -hmm. back when you know like newspapering was a word um, and uh, so that's what I ended up reading